Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures off-road review of this incredible Ram TRX. I'm not sure what to call it. They kind of call it a 1500, but it's not really. It's based off the Ram 1500 with everything from the frame, the suspension, the engine, transmission, drive lines, axles, everything is upgraded. So it's a Ram 1500 with no Ram 1500 parts on it which isn't true entirely as the cab is a Ram 1500, but you've got these massive brakes that, if you can see that, they just barely fit inside of these 18 inch rims with the calipers there. And those brakes are actually pretty thick. It's hard to see on this angle, but they're thick. There's a lot of cooling uh, for those as well with these various ducts throughout that actually will feed air to where it needs to be to cool it. This truck is a monster and totally capable of taking some huge hits. Check out Straight Speed 717 jumping his if you want to see someone doing some crazy stuff with it. But, I mean, overall, this thing is just built like a tank. It can handle some pretty, pretty hard hits. So, um, also... Let's take a look at the rear. All four corners get these Ram Active Terrain Dynamic Bilstein shocks, especially made for the TRX. They call them the Blackhawk E2, and they're 355 millimeter. And that's probably the length. Yep, that would probably be the travel. So I think these have 14 inches of travel on the rear. Got your little wire running to the box here that controls two separate solenoids or valving, one for rebound and the other one for compression. And it's amazing. This truck this is really amazing. I'll talk about it more later. They have the ride height sensors and a bunch of various other things to help send information to those shocks to tell them what to do. So like I said, this axle is a fully floating Dana 60 and it's been modified, it's been upgraded. So it's a very, very strong axle made to handle the off-road abuse. So there you go, headlights are off, but fog lights are on. All right, before we get into the actual high-speed section, um, talk a little bit about the width of this truck and just in general, it's overall size. So I did do a tiny bit of rock crawling. I'll put a picture of that up on the screen. And on this side, I mean, that thing's got some serious articulation. Very impressive. This one is just about off the ground. I might even be able to lift it. Yeah, so I can lift that up. So anyway, the front's not all the way flexed out but the rear sure is and that is a ton of travel it's very capable i mean it's got the rear locker for four-wheel drive low and the rock mode gives you lots of throttle control and it really does quite well but it's just so massive so you got to make sure maybe to have spotters or if you just get used to the truck and you know the edges of it really well because it is really so big but then here, and this one's not really that wide open, but it is open enough that you can really just get up to speed. So this is normally a 20 mile an hour road and 25, you would expect that to be a hard hit. It just isn't. So we're up at 30, 30 miles an hour over this normal hit and it just goes like there's no, no uh, bottoming out of the suspension or anything. Uh, wheels probably came off the ground right there, but it's just so smooth. So at 30 miles an hour, this is less harmful than maybe the Ram Rebel was at 20 miles an hour, which I think saying quite a lot, but I mean, it's hard to portray exactly what that means. I did take this through 
the desert on my way to the sand dunes, I decided to take some dirt roads on the way out rather than sticking to the pavement just to see. And man, this thing sure can fly over those rough dirt roads like this. I mean, this section is pretty rough still, but 30 miles an hour. And you can see the truck is rocking, you know, side to side and whatever, but it's really never bottoming out the suspension. All right, we're just in four wheel drive I and auto mode. And we're just doing the tough line here, the hard line. And of course, it's not gonna be an issue at all. I'm trying to kind of take the hardest spot. There we go. So now we got a couple wheels in the air, throwing some mud. Traction control is really cutting in. I have the pedal on the floor. figured it out eventually now we're in mud and sand mode and traction control is automatically off in mud and sand mode so it's not ideal for climbing like this this is more of a rock mode but we'll try that maybe in a minute here we are at the worst spot it's gonna drop in there we go so, uh, there it goes find the brakes now Man, that one really let the wheel spin go. As you can see, we are in rock mode and we're just gonna go as slow as we can, kind of taking that same hardest possible line. Actually come over to the left and steer right to make it even a little bit worse so the right side's higher. There we go. much easier felt the brake there I could hear the ABS running and much more aggressive than the other modes as far as the braking goes now we're in four-wheel drive high with the rear axle locked and we're just in the auto drive mode Felt the rear end slide a little bit there. And again, two times it slid, but nothing crazy. Of course, went right up the hill. Okay, I've got one final one I wanna do with the axle unlocked, but in four wheel drive low, there it goes. And we're gonna use this select speed. So you can go down here into drive and change the speed up or down by, you pull down and it goes up and you push forward and it goes down. So the lowest is 0 0.6 and the highest is five miles an hour. So we'll go back to reverse and see what it does for backing down the hill. So my feet are off the brakes entirely and it's doing a good job. Basically just brought me to a stop there. Really controlled descent. There's a little bit of sliding, which I've been sliding right there every time I do it on my own. So not any different. All right, so we'll see what it can do going as slow as possible up this hill. So we're set to 0.6 of a mile an hour and we'll see what it can do. And it actually shows on the head up display. Let me get to the camera. Uh, you can't see it. Anyway, it shows one mile an hour in the bottom right hand corner of that as the selected speed. So there we go. Starting to hop. I heard it throttle up just a little bit. I'm right out of that. This is with the rear diff unlocked. So kind of a worst case scenario for this system. Just in auto mode. Really no problem making that climb at all couple things to go over real quick to use rock mode you have to be in four wheel drive low and also to use this select speed you have to be in four wheel drive low all you do put it in four wheel drive low hit that button as soon as you go into drive 
it will keep you at your set speed and you can actually use the paddle shifters up to a maximum of five miles an hour or down to 0.6 so pretty cool little system works really well I imagine the engineers from Jeep helped them out with this but not too bad easy to work with and you don't hear the brakes running like you do with the Toyota system so yes when the wheel starts to spin you hear the brakes but in the Toyota it seems like it's constantly braking whereas this one you only hear it on occasion the articulation on this thing is nuts if you haven't already go check out Dan Edmonds channel the Land Cruiser is the only vehicle with a higher RTI that he has tested but RTI isn't the whole story as this nearly drove off the top of his test ramp. So the best mode for driving off-road in this thing is whatever train you're on, select that mode. If you want more experience, more practice, just leave it in four-wheel drive auto or four-wheel drive load and don't turn on the rear locker. In the worst case scenario, turn on the rear locker, turn on rock mode or whatever you need and use that mode to get out. We'll talk more about Baja mode in the next video when I'm running through the sand dunes. And I ended the test on this hill with that just because there's so much articulation it would really be pointless to try out the other modes. Here just to test it to the best of its abilities I drove straight rather than turning and you can see even doing that it was able to clear the breakover test. Underneath we see it's very well protected with skid plates basically running from front to rear protecting all the vital components. Everything is lifted up and out of the way, up between the frame rails. You can see the true dual exhaust with the X-pipe there. And there's the five link rear suspension. Just an incredible setup. Very, very, very well designed for off-roading. And you get a full size spare tire matching the Goodyear Wrangler Duratrex on the rest of the truck. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures off-road review of this. 2021 Ram TRX. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming videos. And be sure to comment down below. Let me know what things you're interested in seeing, what types of tests you want to see. And overall, this truck, just amazing. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, be sure to comment and let me know why. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.